Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, so let's get started with this lecture. Now, in the last lecture, this is what we studied. We learned about how to pass arrays to functions, and we wrote a couple of functions uh, to which we passed arrays. Uh, we'll look again at that code. Uh, we also looked at some sorting algorithms. So sorting, not some sorting algorithms. In fact, we just implemented one sorting algorithm, and that was the bubble sort algorithm. Uh, we talked about why it is important to be able to sort arrays. Uh, it is an important computation that we almost always need to do. Uh, so we just looked at one uh, very simple algorithm, the bubble sort algorithm, and we implemented that. Okay. Uh, then we talked about compute computing the mean, median, and mode of data stored in arrays. We uh, wrote a function that would compute the mean of an array. Uh, we left the calculation of median and mode of arrays as an exercise. So I hope you have worked on that. And I will uh, post a homework for that on Google Classroom. And I would want you to submit your code there, assuming that you have already worked uh, on that. Okay. In this lecture, we are going to uh, talk about two things. One, we are going to talk about searching uh, arrays for some value. This is also an important computation. We might need to do it. Okay. Uh, very often, like we need to do something like that. We, we are going to talk about two types of search. One is linear search and the other is binary search. I will implement the linear search and I will again leave the binary search as, as, as a homework for you. I would like you to practice uh, working on binary search. It is slightly, slightly challenging. You'll need to sort the array. We have the code for sorting an array. So you'll sort the array and then you'll, you'll be able to do the binary search. So we'll talk about like what is binary search and how does it work. We'll talk about that. Uh, then we'll talk about multi-dimensional arrays or multiple or multi-subscripted arrays. Okay, so arrays which have rows and columns, we'll talk about those arrays. And multi-dimension dimensional arrays are not just restricted to two dimensions. Okay, so rows and columns are uh, when we have uh, when we have just two dimensions. Uh, that is uh, rows and columns. So this, so this basically looks like a table, and it has these rows and these columns. Okay, so multi-dimensional arrays have. So this is a two-dimensional array. It has two dimensions. So it goes or it expands along the x-axis and the y-axis. We can have three-dimensional arrays. So it will have uh, uh, like uh, layers of tables upon each other. So we'll have one table, then below that another table, then below that another table. So we will have uh, tables that would be like uh, expanding along the z-axis. Okay. Uh, similarly, we can have four-dimensional arrays, five-dimensional arrays. But usually, like mostly, we, uh, we, we, the arrays that we need are mostly two-dimensional. Okay? Why? Because mostly, say, for example, if you are working with matrices or solving linear systems, so you can, you can use or you can write code in C++ that would allow you to solve a linear system, a, le a linear system of equations. Okay? So you would be able to solve that linear system of equations. And that you can do using uh, multi-dimensional arrays or multiple subscripted arrays. So we learn how to do that. Not how to solve uh, a system, you can do that as well. But we learn how to declare and initialize multi-dimensional arrays, especially two-dimensional arrays. And we'll try, like if we can, uh, we'll try to write some code that will allow us to work with matrices, OK? So let's see if we, if we can do that, if we have time for, for doing that. So first, we'll talk about searching arrays. Now, in order to search arrays, we, we will talk about two algorithms or two methods. One is linear search. So this is very simple. Like, if you have to search for some value in an array, we call that value as key value. So the value that we want to search for, we call that value as the key value. And the way we search it is we start from the very first element in the array. We compare that element with the key if it is equal to the key, we return the index of that element. Okay, we have found this element key, uh, sorry, this key in this array, and it is at index this. Okay, so that is what we do. 
if we don't find it here, we go to the next element in the array. We compare it. If we if there is a match, we return the index of the next element. If there is no match, we move to the next element and then the next element and then the next element until we look we have we have compared like all the elements with the key value. So this uh, this method of searching uh, some value or a key value in an array it is called linear search okay and it starts from uh, the first element of the array and it goes up until the last element of the array uh, or until it finds a match in the array okay so that is what it does now it is useful for small and unsorted array arrays so if the array is unsorted and it is small linear search is good enough but if the array gets bigger and bigger, so then it becomes very inefficient and it becomes very slow. Okay, so then what do you need to do? Uh, if search key is not present, then it, it has to examine every element. So that is also another part of it. So uh, if we, for example, uh, want to, uh, if we have an array that is in sorted order, so then we can we can basically search for a value in a sorted array much quickly with another algorithm and that algorithm is the binary search algorithm okay so i'll just just implement this algorithm for you the linear search and then we look at the binary search or let's look at the binary binary search first so this is how the binary search works let me explain it to you so binary search is used only with sorted arrays you should remember you should always remember that okay so it is always used with sorted arrays now how do we use it with sorted arrays i'll tell i'll give you an example of that so say for example we have this array and say for example this array has seven elements say for example okay so one two three four five one two three four five six and let us make this one seven okay now this array is sorted so let us add some entry uh, values to it so 13 this has to be sorted say 27 31 okay uh, 59 say for example so these are all sorted in ascending order this is index number zero index number one index number two index number three index number 4, index number 5, and index number 6, okay, so uh, 59, and then say 68, and then say 81, and then say 98, okay, so, so this is a sorted array, and let's say we want to search for some value, okay, now what is that value uh, let's say for example that value is uh, 88 and okay so i chose some value which does not exist in this array and then this is the first key value that we want to search for and say let us choose another value that may exist in this array so let us choose say 13 and let us say choose uh, 98 as well so we look for these three values one by one and that will help demonstrate uh, how the binary search works okay so the binary search assumes that this array is in sorted like this is a sorted array so how would it search for 88 okay so the first thing that the binary search algorithm will do is it will look for the uh, middle element of the array okay it will look for the middle element of the array and compare this value with that element so this array has seven elements starting from index 0 going up until index uh, 6 so the first thing that is going to do it's going to find which element is the middle element this one is the middle element okay is left pe bhi teen elements hain right pe bhi teen elements hain so this is the middle element acha now it will compare this value with this element is 88 uh, equal to this element no it is not Achha. is 88 less than this element 
No, it is not. Is 88 greater than this element? Yes, it is. ठीक है, so ये तीन questions ये पूछेगा. One, क्या ये 88, जिस, जिस value को हम we are looking for, is this value equal to this element or not? If it is, then we return के जी, हमें num, the key value has been found and this is its index. If it is not equal, then what do we do? So then we basically uh, ask questions. Okay, is it less than this element or is it greater than this element? Why do we ask these questions? We want to know, okay, should we look for this element in the left half of the array or in the right half of the array? Since 88 is greater than this element and this array is sorted, that means ke ye jo 88 hai, we will find this element in the right half. Is half mein hume se mile, ye, ye element milega. We don't need to search for it in this half. Okay? So, binary search ka matlab ye hai ke each time we are going to reduce our search space into half. Do do hisso mein hum usko divide karte jayenge. Search space ka matlab ye hai ke wo jaga jis mein aapne kisi element ko search karna hai. Wo jaga jis mein aapne kisi element ko search karna hai. Thik hai? Achha ji. So, pehle humare paas search space thi ye puri array. All the seven elements of this array, they comprised our search space. So, after the first, uh, say, iteration of the binary search algorithm, we reduced our search space into half. Three elements pe leke aage. Ab in teen elements mein humne search karna hai. Lekin search kaise karna hai? Now we have to look at this sub-array. Ab is, ye, is puri array ko humne nahi dekhna. We have to search for 80, 88 in this sub-array. Kaise search karenge? We have to repeat that process. We need to find out the middle position of this array, which is index 5. Okay? And we need to compare, ask the same questions. Is 88 equal to uh, this element? No, it is not. Then we need to ask, is 88 less than this element? No, it is not. Is 88 greater than this element? Yes, it is. That means ke we have to search for 88 in this half of this array, not in this half. Okay? So again, we have search space ko divide kar diya by 2. So now we have to look for 88 in this array, in this subarray. Okay? Now in this subarray, the element, number of elements is 1. In this subarray, the number of elements is 1. Okay? So we cannot like subdivide it any further. So all we need to do is compare 88 with this element. Is it equal to this element? No, it is not. So then we can declare that this array does not have 88. 88 could not be found. Okay? So we can declare that. Achit. Now, this is our binary search work. So I hope like you understand it. Uh, you can like understand it. Okay? So now we have uh, elements are in our elements are seven elements. In this array, maybe we had seven elements. But we did one two and three comparisons. We have three checks and three passes. Okay? So after that, like we, we know that 88 is in array. Mein nahi hai. So if in, in linear search, we had to compare like each and every element of the array and then we would know ke whether we uh, that element exists or not. Okay? Now let us search for thir 13. Let us search for 13. 13 ko bhi humne usi tarah se dekhna hai. So first of all, let us go to the middle element, which is at index 3. Is 13 equal to this element? No. Is 13 greater than this element? No. Is 13 less than this element? Yes. So that means ke humne 13 ko is half mein search karna hai. Okay. Let us erase this thing. 13 does not exist in this half. Is half mein nahi hai. We have to, in fact, let me, let me get an eraser. Let us remove this thing and this thing and this thing. Let me change, hit the pen and change its color. Now we are looking for, say, 13. Okay. So after asking the first questions, uh, we found out K13 jo hai, we would find we are more likely to find it in this half of the array, and 13 cannot be found in this half. Kyun? Kyun ke 
this is the middle element 13 is smaller than this element and this array is sorted so is sorted ka matlab ye hai ki iske right pe values jo hain wo 30 59 se badi hain to wo 13 se bhi badi hongi so there is no use uh, of searching 13 in the right half of the array we we have uh um, like we there are chances that we may find 13 in the left half of the array okay so we have to search for 13 in this half of the array now this sub we have to search for this sub array is sub array ka middle element kaun sa wala hai wo hai 27 okay so let us we we'll, the next thing that we'll do is we'll compare 13 with 30 27 is 13 equal to 27 no is 13 greater than 27 no is 13 less than 27 yes that means k we can find 13 in the left half of this sub array and we cannot find 13 here okay now this sub array has just one element and when we compare 13 with this element so 13 is equal to 13 so we have found 13 and now we can return the index of this element we can return the index of this element and that would basically uh like uh, end the program so we would have found the element 13 theek hai acha so we we found the element 13 we found the element 13 now let's search for 98 let me change the thing so now we want to search for 98 again we'll start from the middle of this array theek hai so we'll start from here 59 and we'll compare 59 with 98 are they equal no they are not is 98 less than 59 no it is not is 98 greater than 59 yes it is so we can find 98 in this half of this array here we cannot find it theek hai now in this half of we have to search for in this half of the array we have searched for 98 in this half of the array so if you can think uh, if you look at this algorithm there is a recursive pattern okay there is a recursive pattern we are re repeating a set of sequences first for the uh, entire array then for one half of the array then for one quarter of the array then for one eighth of the array and then for say one sixteenth of the array so with each iteration or with each call we are basically dividing the array into uh into into halves okay so we are dividing the array or our search space into halves so now we are we have to look for 98 here now here we have to find out the middle point okay so this is the middle point of this sub array 50 uh, sorry 81 is 98 equal to 81 no is 98 less than 81 no is 98 greater than 81 yes so that means we can find 98 in this uh half of this array not in this half of the array and in this half of the array we only have one element we only have one element so we compare this element with uh when uh, with 98 and they are equal and so we return the index of this element and we say that we were successful in finding this element okay so this is how the binary search works you can read uh the text here this, it basically attempts to explain what i just explained and this search algorithm is very fast and you would you would have noticed it so for seven elements we we needed for seven elements we needed three steps kind of theek hai uh now seven is basically uh 2 raised to the power 3 minus 1 theek hai Seven is basically this thing, okay? Or seven plus one, okay? So this is the this is equal to eight, okay? And if we take the log of eight to the base two, okay? So we will have three, okay? So in general. In, in general if we have an array with n elements okay and we want to know the number of steps that would be required to search for an element in that array so that would be equal to n plus 1 capital n plus 1 and log to the base 2 okay 
okay log to the base 2 that would be the number of steps required that would be the number of steps Num or number of iterations of this binary search algorithm take a number of steps or iterations take a number of steps so say for example we have uh, uh, we have uh, an, an array with 255 elements okay say for example we have n is equal to 255 an array with 255 elements then 255 plus 1 is 256 Okay, and if you take the log of 256 to the base 2, so that is basically 8. So that means that you would be able to search for any element uh, within at most 8 steps. Take 8 steps, may you would be able to find any element in that array. Okay, you would be able to search that array if that array is in sorted uh, condition. It must be sorted. Okay. So log of uh, any number to the base 2 means ke, uh, what should be the power of 2 to get that number. Like uh, iska ye matlab hai ke if, if this is equal to y, okay, if this is equal to y, that means 2 raised to the power y is equal to n plus 1. That means 2 raised to the power y is equal to n plus 1. Okay, that is what it means. Achari. So I hope this part is clear. Okay? So let me write the code for linear search. So I'm not writing the code for binary search. Uh, that like I can, but I want you to. This is harder. I want you to have a go at it uh, yourself. Okay. So you should think about how to do it. Uh, I'll just write code for linear search. Okay. And then we'll talk about multiple subscripted or multi-dimensional arrays. Okay, so let me write that code. So this is the code that we wrote last time. It was for initializing arrays, printing arrays, and then sorting arrays using, using the bubble sort algorithm and finding the mean of the arrays and all. Okay, so we did all of these things. So here uh, we want to uh, do a linear search. Okay, so let us write the prototype for that so linear search would return the index of the item uh, that it find uh, that if, if we find the element in that array so it would return the index if we cannot find it would return minus one okay so that would mean if we couldn't find that element minus one is not a valid index so it is a valid return type for this this function so let us call this function as linear search so we would give it the array then the size of the array, okay, uh, and then we would give it the key value uh, for which we need to search. So this is going to be the prototype of the linear search uh, function. Okay, let us write this function. This here is the mean function. Let us write the linear search function here. Uh, okay. So this is going to be the array uh, in which we have to search for the element. This is going to be its size. Let us call it as z. This is going to be the key value. Take it. So we are going to search for this value. We are going to search for this value. How would we search it? Take it. So this is how we would search it. So we'll start with the first element of the array, starting with index zero. And we have to go to up until SZ less than SZ minus one. Okay. And what are we going to do? This is what we are going to do. Uh, we are going to compare. Okay. If 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 uh, the ith element in this array is equal to the key value is equal to the key value Achha. if it is equal to the key value then what should you do then we should return the index okay then 
we should return the index i. That means we have found the key value and it is at index i. If that is not the case, and we have to like repeat this process for all the elements of the array. For all the elements of the array, we have to do it for all the elements of the array. So if we get out of this loop and get here, that means we couldn't find the element stored in the value key in this array. If we found it, then uh, we would get out of this function. return i so you will get out of this function and you will return the index value. लेकिन अगर ये statement execute नहीं होती, that means के आपको वो value इस पूरी array में नहीं मिलती, and that means के you couldn't find that value, so फिर आप यहाँ पे आएंगे, out of the loop, here you can say return minus one. इसका क्या मतलब है? Couldn't find, couldn't find the uh, value, couldn't find the key value in the array. इसका ये मतलब Okay, that is how we would interpret this result. Okay. Now, let us test this function, if it works or not. So, here we have declared an array to the 10 element array. We initialize it with random values. Okay. And then we ask the user, say for example, let me get rid of this code. Uh, let me first copy it paste it here and now I want to get rid of this thing okay so the array to search for is so the array in which we want to search for values this is that array then we ask the user uh, enter a key value to search in the array. We ask the user to enter some value to search for in the array. The user would enter some value and we would read it. Okay. Let us do that. So here uh, I'm going to declare another variable int say key. Achha. And let us uh, ask the user five times. Take it. So for say int i is equal to zero, uh, i less than five, plus plus i. So we are going to ask the user say at least five times. He will tell us what search karna chata hai array mein. Or we will search that element. Take it. Then we would call the uh, the linear search function. Okay. Then we would call the linear search function. Achha. This is in int in key, and this is. Uh, iske baad we declare a variable index. Okay. Int index. This is the index of the element. Uh, which would be or the value returned by the linear search function okay so index is equal to linear search Achha, usko hum array pass kar hain. that array is this integer array size is uh, array size and key is key okay Achha. so the linear search function would search for this element in this array and if it finds this element it would return the index of this element that would be a value between 0 and array size minus 1 if it cannot it will return uh, minus 1 okay so we can compare that we can uh, print the result so we can say if index is equal to minus 1. So if the linear search function returns minus 1, that means C out, that means uh, couldn't find the, the value, couldn't find the value key in the array. 
ठीक है दैट इज वट इट मीन दैन अच्छा एल्स इफ इट इज नॉट इक्वल टू माइनस वन दैट मीन्स इट इज समेड वैल्यू एल्स we would print this message we would say key or this value key theek hai key is at index is at index index in the array So this is what we would print. So again, what are we what are we doing here? So we are what we are doing here. We are trying. We are basically testing our linear search function. Our linear search function takes the array as an argument in which it has to search for the key value, the size of the array, and the key value for which which it has to search in this array. This is the linear search function. This is the array that it has to search for. Uh, the key value in this is the size of the array and this is the key value how would it search it would start from the very first element of the array which is at index 0 and it would go and search for the very last element of the array which would be at index sz minus 1 so i jo hai wo zero se start hoga aur sz minus 1 tak jayega if it finds uh, the key value ठीक है ना अरे का आई एथ एलिमेंट उसको कंपेयर करेगा विद की वैल्यू दे आर इक्वल इट वुड रिटर्न द इंडेक्स आई जिस पे ये दोनों इक्वल हुए हैं ठीक है जब रिटर्न अगर ये इसको मिल जाता है तो फिर ये स्टेटमेंट एग्जीक्यूट होगी और जब ये स्टेटमेंट एग्जीक्यूट होगी तो फिर बेसिकली क्या होगा कि आप इस फंक्शन से बाहर निकल जाएंगे लेकिन अगर इस पूरी लूप की एग्जीक्यूशन में इट नेवर फाइंड द की वैल्यू दिस स्टेटमेंट वॉन्ट बी एग्जीक्यूटेड एंड यू विल कम हेयर That means जब आप यहाँ पे पहुंचते हैं that means you couldn't find the key value. So then you return minus one value. Minus one would indicate to the main function that we could not find the key value. ठीक है? Minus one is not a valid array index, so we can pass minus one. In the main function, what are we doing? So we initialize the array with some random values, and then we uh, print that array. Uh, and after that what we do is we ask the user to enter a key value to search in the array okay and we ask the user five times basically what we want to do is we want to test our function now we call the linear search function and we store its return value in the variable index if index is equal to minus 1 that means we couldn't find the value okay if it is not minus 1 it is something else that means the key value could be found it was found at some index okay So let's test this code. Let us compile it. Okay, I guess it compiled fine. And now we can build and run it. Okay. What happened here? Acha, we didn't ask the user to enter the key value. That's why, like, everything was printed. So. Here, after printing this message, we have to ask the user to enter the key value. Okay. Achha. So now let us build and run it. So this is the array. Okay. This is the array. So let's search for some element in this array. So let's search for say an element that exists in this array. So I want to search for say ninety six. So 96 is at index 8 in the array. Okay, at index this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, it found 96 and it was at index 8. Let us find 16. So 16 is at index 2 in the array. Let us try to find 50. Okay, couldn't find the value 50 in the array. Okay. Uh, let us try to find ten. Couldn't find the value ten in the array. Let us find two. Two is at index four in the array. Okay, so the program works fine, and this is basically how linear search works. So, like I hope 
this is uh, easy it's not that difficult okay so after linear search the next topic is multiple subscripted or multi-dimensional arrays okay so what do we mean by multi multi-dimensional or multi multiple subscripted arrays arrays so multiple subscripted arrays means that they have two subscripts so what do we mean by that now if you remember your discussion from uh, matrices in your FSC so how did you represent the elements of the matrix so you represented them as a i j okay so these are two subscripts these are two subscripts uh, this is a superscript say for example a square so 2 is a superscript and this is a subscript now these subscripts what do they indicate in the case of matrices so this indicates the ith row this is the ith row okay and this is the jth column this is the jth column okay jth column so pardon my handwriting i'm doing it using a mouse so these are two subscripts they basically tell you that this element a is located in a two dimensional space or in a two dimensional array or in a two dimensional grid or in a two dimensional table and that table has rows and that table has columns okay and this is in the ith row whatever that is and in the jth column okay so i and j can have specific values this is a general uh, index or variable that we are using it to specify but they can have specific values so these are multiple subscripts these are multiple subscripts one dimensional arrays have uh, single subscript so this is a one dimensional array we can call it a, as a vector as well say for example let us call it as x okay so x is a, a, a one dimensional so up until now like we have been dealing with one dimensional arrays one dimensional arrays and these arrays have a single subscript or a single dimension they either have a row or a column okay so you can interpret them as having a row or a column now this uh, they have a single subscript so they have just i like if you want to access the individual elements of this array so you can use a single index to do that you can use a single index to do that that is why they are single subscripted okay and we also call them a vector do not confuse it with the vector of physics in in fact this is uh, an extension of that vector so the vectors that you studied in physics it had only two components you studied about two dimensional vectors or perhaps three dimensional vectors and those uh, components were rectangular components so those components were along the x y and z axis and all these axes are at right angles to each other so they are rectangular components of the vector but a vector can have uh, uh, not just two or three components it can have any number of components even in a two dimensional space or a three dimensional space doesn't matter okay so rectangular components they are limited in number because in any space in any n dimensional space the number of rectangular components is always equal to n if you are working in a two dimensional space so you will only have two rectangular components because there are two dimensions or axes so the rectangular components are always magnitudes along those axes along those axes but uh, in general if we are talking about non rectangular components so their number can they can have any number okay so you you should not be confusing when in programming we mention the term vector so that vector has components which are not necessarily rectangular components and their number is not not necessarily restricted to two or three they can have as many components as we want okay Achha, so this is basically a double subscripted or multi subscripted uh, this is what we mean by multi subscripted so multiple subscripts or dimension this is what they mean so now we are talking about tables with rows and columns okay when you create a two dimensional array or double subscripted array or an array with two subscripts so basically you are creating an array with rows and columns okay uh, so the first subscript it's it specifies the row 
okay it specifies the row and the second subscript it specifies the column okay uh, you can also like this is basically uh, an array with uh, three rows and four columns okay this is basically an array with three rows and four columns so this is row 0 this is row 1 this is row 2 this is column 0 column 1 column 2 column 3 the indexes would always start from 0 and would go up until the size of that dimension minus 1 the size of that dimension minus 1 that is what uh, they are going to go up until you can also call a multi dimensional array as an array of arrays okay so you can think of this row as this array a0 you can think of it as the array a0 okay this is the array a0 this here is the array a0 you can think of uh, uh, this one as the array a1 this one here you can think of it as the array a1 okay and similarly the last one uh, this one you can think of it as the array uh, a2 you can think of it as the array a2 or you can think consider this one as a row vector this this is a row vector this is a row vector this is a row vector okay similarly these are column vectors column 3 is a column vector column 2 is a column vector column 1 this is a column vector this is a column vector okay so you can think of these either way if you want to access individual elements of this uh, uh, two dimensional array so you have to specify both the row index and the column index so a00 means uh, this element this element here is at the 0th row and 0th column okay let me use another color uh, similarly this element a22 okay so this is in the second row and second column uh, this is uh, in the 0th row and third column this here is in the first row and first column okay so if you want to access individual elements that is how you can access it access them okay so how do you declare and initialize multi-dimensional arrays so let us look at the different ways uh, you can declare uh, multi-dimensional arrays like this this is how we declare them okay this is how we declare them this is how multi-dimensional array is declared int and then name of the array and then within square brackets separate square brackets you specify the size of each dimension so this is the number of rows and this here is the number of columns this is the number of columns so you specify the number of rows and the number of columns okay now you can initialize it the same way as we initialize by default if you don't initialize them it will have garbage values okay so let's uh, write some code and do all these initializations there as well okay let us go there so I created another project I'll close this one uh, otherwise it will become too cluttered and let us create uh, open another project now here like this I created for talking about multi-dimensional arrays now this is how you declare a multi-dimensional array okay so you specify the type this is a two-dimensional array of type integers so we are going to create a matrix of integers with four rows these are the number of rows and four columns take okay, four rows and four columns now if you declare it and you don't initialize it so all these elements will have garbage values and that you can verify here okay so we can print these this 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 array we can print this array multi-dimensional array now since it is two dimension dimensional array it is a two dimensional array uh, that means now we need to uh, process each row and then all the columns in that row okay so this here the outer for loop this is for accessing individual rows see okay? so i is the row index so first of all we access row number 0 
and in row number 0 we access then column number one, 0, column number 1, column number 2, column number 3. Then once we have printed row number 0, we go to i becomes 2, uh, i becomes 1, it was 0, i becomes 1, then we go to the second row. Okay? So in the second row then we access the column, uh, column number 0, uh, the first column, the second column, the third column and the fourth column. Okay? So this here is the uh, column index, j here is the column index. So for a, in order to print or access elements uh, of a two dimensional array you need nested for loops. Okay? You need nested for loops if you want to do it row wise or column wise so you you'll need nested for loop okay there are other ways of doing it as well but uh, in order to do it properly uh, this is how you would do it this is how you would do it okay so you need a nested for loop the outer for loop accesses column uh, rows and the inner for loop it accesses individual columns in each row okay Achha. So here what we are doing is we are accessing the i j element. So initially i is 0 and j is 0 then for, the, for this second iteration of the this loop i remains 0 j is 1 then i is 0 j is 2 then i is 0 j is 3 okay? then this loop is done executing so we print an end line character that signals ke pehli row print ho chuki hai and here we go to the second iteration of this loop so i becomes 1 then we start accessing a10 a11 a12 a13 uh, then that row is printed acha ye hum beech mein ek tab character dal rahe hain okay? so let us see how this code uh, act behaves so it compiles fine let us build and run it so this is the two dimensional array with garbage values okay so these are definitely these are not initialized so ye garbage values hai acha ab yahan pe ho kya raha hai ke theek hai har do values ke beech mein there is a tab character so aapko ye thoda sa uh, proper nazar aa rahi hai ye values theek hai acha now how can we initialize it so if you want to initialize we can initialize it using initializer lists okay if you want to initialize all of them to the value 0 so this is how you can do it like you can say 0 so it will initialize all the elements in this two dimensional array to 0 okay so you can verify that this is how we did it for columns as well uh, or for sorry one dimensional arrays as well row vectors or column vectors whatever you uh, however you want to interpret them so this is how we initialized all all of them to zeros as well so if you build and run this code so now the array will have uh, all the elements initialized to zero okay Achha, if you want to initialize them to some this is how you initialize them to all of them to zero let me comment this thing out if you want to initialize individual rows take it so then you can specify values for individual rows for example values for the first row say we want the first row to have these elements one okay say one uh, comma three comma two comma say five this is the first row okay Achha. then we want to specify values for the second row so it can have say 0 comma 6 comma 7 comma 2 then we can specify values for the third row okay uh, those can be 3 comma 8 comma 9 comma say 1 and then in the end we can specify values for the fourth uh, row okay so the fourth row will have uh, 5 say comma 8 comma 4 comma 3 say for example okay so you can specify 
uh, separate values for each row. You can do that. Okay. Achha. This is another way of initializing this array. Achha, let us build and run. How does this work? So you can see uh, this was the first row 1, 3, 2, 5, second row 0, 6, 7, 2, 0, 6, 7, 2, 3, 8, 9, 1, 3, 8, 9, 1, 5, 8, 4, 3. So you can do it this way as well. Let me comment this thing out as well. Uh, let us do it in another way. So, at times, like you can skip some values. You can say, in this for this row, you can specify just six and seven. So the missing values will be uh, replaced with zero zeros. And here you can specify say three values. Here you can specify just a single value. So you can do the initialization like this as well. So these are the all four values for the first row. So the first row will be one, three, two, five. The second will be six, seven, zero, zero. The missing values will be replaced with zero. The third row would be three, eight, nine, zero, and the fourth row would be five, zero, zero, zero. Okay. Build and run this one. One three two five six seven zero zero three eight nine zero and five triple zero. Okay, so this is how you can do the initialization. The missing values they will be replaced with zeros. Similarly, we can also initialize the array uh, in this way as well. Uh, say, for example, let me comment this thing out and then let me copy it again. Sorry. Let me paste this code here. So we can, like here we specified values for each row. Okay. So this is for row number 1. This is for, sorry, row number 0, row number 1, row number 2, and row number 3. And we have four columns in each row. In the first row, we specified values for all four columns, then for only two columns, then for three columns, and then for just one column. So the values for missing columns, they were replaced by zeros, okay? Now, we can also initialize it this way, like we can uh, save ourselves the trouble of specifying row values for individual rows, and we can just say, okay, we want to initialize it this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's it, say, I'm specifying the 7 values. And all these values have been specified in a single list. Okay, so this is just one initializer list. But on the left, we have a two-dimensional array. It has four rows and four columns. So how are these values going to be copied? So these values are going to be copied row-wise. So the first four values would go to row number zero. The second, the, the, the next three values would go to row number two. And after that, all values will be initialized to 0, 0, 0, okay? So if you build and run this code, this is what we are going to have. So the values are copied row-wise, okay? So first four values go to row number 0, and the, sec uh, the remaining three values go to row number row at index 1. And the remaining values in the two-dimensional array, they are initialized to 0. Okay. Now, this may not make a lot of sense, but internally, like a two-dimensional array is stored as a one-dimensional array. And this, this uh, concept of rows and columns, this is just for us, for programmers. Like, we can think of all these values in terms of rows and columns, but internally, in the computer's RAM, all these values are stored uh, in the form of... Uh, uh, rows and columns uh, in the form of a single row okay you can verify that and how can you verify that like we can print all the addresses of these elements and you'll see like they are all contiguous all these addresses are contiguous or consecutive okay so this is how we like this is another way of initializing uh, these values 
uh, sorry, the, the all the elements of a two-dimensional array. Now let's get back to the, the, the slides. So we have looked at this and multi-subscripted array they are like you can access individual elements just like uh, you do in a normal one-dimensional array but you have to specify the indexes for both elements okay you have to specify indexes for uh, both the elements okay you have to specify indexes for not both the elements but both the dimensions you have to spe specify the row index as well as the column index so this here is say uh, the row index, this is the row index and this is the column index, okay? This is row number 0, this is row number 0, row number 1, okay? row with index 1. This is uh, column with index 0 and column with index 1. So this element is 0, 1, it is basically this element, okay? So when you say see out uh, 0, 1 so the output on the screen would be 0 this element if you say see out b 1 1 so the output would be 4 okay Actually, you cannot reference individual elements like this you cannot say within a within one pair of square brackets you you cannot specify the indexes for row and column and separate them just by a comma so this is this would be an error this would be an error you cannot do something like this now the next important thing is that how do we from uh, how do we uh, pass multi subscripted arrays to functions? So it's slightly different than a single subscripted array. Okay. Uh, in order to pass a single subscripted array or a one dimensional array, so all you needed to do was do something like this. Okay. So int and then a pair of square brackets. So that means ke aap jo hai, you want to pass uh, an array to this function so we have written many functions like this but in in the case of multi subscripted arrays uh, you need to specify the dimension of the second uh, at least uh, the second dimension okay you need to specify the size of the second dimension at least you can specify the size of both dimensions uh, but at least the second dimension like you if you don't specify the size for this dimension just like the way you we used to do for one dimensional arrays that is fine but you have to specify the size of uh, or some value here uh, for the second dimension now this value like this is the prototype so this can be three four or whatever uh, and when you are actually implementing that function this can be different but you have to specify some value here that is the requirement of the C++ compiler okay so you must specify the sizes of the subscripts at least the second one if not the first one at least this the columns you have to specify the number of columns if not the number of rows okay so this is how you pass uh, array a multi-dimensional array or multiple separate array to a function so we look at uh, this possibility as well so this is a function in which this has been done this we have written code like this okay so this is how you this is basically a code for initializing multi-dimensional arrays and printing the, those arrays so let us let us do that uh, in our code okay you can look at this code this would be another example for you you can look at it and you can try to understand it okay let us do it the way we want to do it Achha. So then that would be most probably the end of it and but we'll try to demonstrate uh, this or this something like this take in bono music is it is to demonstrate cutting so let us first learn how to pass multi subscripted arrays to functions okay let's get back here Achha. Now, what do we want to do? We want to initialize uh, a multi-dimensional array uh, with with uh, with what? With some values, okay? We we want to do that, or we want to then print it, okay? So let us learn how to do that. So first of all, say we want to write a function that would initialize. Uh, a multi-dimensional array 
सो आई एम राइटिंग इन इट एम डी अरे मल्टी डायमेंस अरे ठीक है सो हाउ वुड द फंक्शन प्रोटोटाइप लुक फॉर दिस वन सो वी हैव टू स्पेसिफाई एटलीस्ट द साइज ऑफ द सेकेंड the num uh, dimension here the number of columns here this is a requirement if you don't do it then the compiler would give you an error theek hai acha and here like we would pass the actual size the actual size so this is uh, uh, rows uh, number of rows and then number of columns theek hai acha number of rows and number of columns let me let us implement this function in fact let us try to compile it like that so the compiler says that you must have bounds for all dimensions except the first like you must specify bounds for all dimensions except the first one so you have we have to specify the size for the second dimension at least here that is what we talked about theek okay? hai acha now this is fine let us define this function okay let us define this function actually so let us do the initialization initialization kaise karni hai this would be number of rows this would be number of columns and this would be we can we can leave it at 4 ठीक है एंड गिव इट सम नेम दिस वुड बी द अरे इसको हमने इनिशियलाइज करना है ठीक है अच्छा इन ऑर्डर टू वी वांट टू इनिशियलाइज दिस अरे विद रैंडम वैल्यूज रैंडम वैल्यूज सो वी नीड द सी स्टैंडर्ड लाइब्रेरी फॉर द रैंड फंक्शन एंड वी वांट टू रैंडमाइज द सीड वैल्यू so we need the c time library theek hai acha ji so the first thing that we'll do in the init function we'll randomize the seed value so that is called s rand function and to it we'll pass the time function and null so this would randomize the seed value of the random number generator and then we would be able to generate random values theek hai acha this is fine now we need to initialize all the elements of the array so we need to write these loops for i is equal to uh, 0 uh, int i is equal to 0 we have to define and declare okay int i is equal to 0 uh, i less than rows we have to initialize all the rows uh, plus plus i and then in each row we have to initialize the columns for int j is equal to 0 j less than columns and then plus plus j okay plus plus j acha so now we can initialize all the elements how are we going to do that so we have to access the i j element i j element and we have to assign it some random value by calling the rand function and scaling those values so those values would be scaled we want the values to be between say uh 0 and 10 okay so let us scale it with 10 so we will have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so that would be the range of values that we'll have theek hai acha ji so this would initialize this multi dimensional array i hope theek okay? hai now let us print this array let us write a function that would print it so void print multi dimensional array theek okay? hai so isko bhi aise hi define karte hain iska prototype aise hi likhte hain and then int and then int theek okay? hai so let us properly space it अच्छा तो लेट अस डिफाइन दिस फंक्शन ठीक है लेट अस कॉपी दिस आर्गुमेंट्स 
paste them here that is what how we want it and let us create write this function in fact this function is already written like we have this code here so let me copy it and let us paste it here okay so for int i is equal to 0 i less than rows rows and then uh, j less than columns okay and we are printing the ij element of this array with a tab and then after each row we want to print a new line character okay so this is how we print it so let us get rid of this code as well and let us uh, declare this array it is an array with four elements and four columns four rows and four columns total of 16 integers or elements uh, let us initialize it first so call the init multi-dimensional array function that we wrote we pass it this array a it has four rows four columns okay Achha. and then let us print this array so print multi-dimensional array and again we pass it the array, the number of rows, the number of columns. Okay. So this is what we do. Achha. Now let us uh, compile this file and then build and run it. Build and run. So we declare this matrix and we initialize it with random values between 0 and 10 and then we printed it. So this is our query. Achha. The next thing that we want to do is, uh, say we want to, uh, uh, like you can use these multi-dimensional or two-dimensional arrays as uh, for different purposes, just like the way we mentioned here. So say for example, uh, we can use it to uh, keep track of students grade okay uh, for example uh, if I have to store or process the values of all of you uh, uh, and I have to keep a record of your midterm marks your final term marks your quizzes and assignments and then I need to calculate say the, the your total uh, total total what uh, the total marks that you got so I can do that we can do that using a multi-dimensional array okay and how can we do it so uh, let's look at this example so this basically uh, in this example like we have an array with four elements okay and what we are showing here is that along each row say the zero row it represents data for student with say class number 0 or class number 1 then the second row uh, stores the data for the second student and the first column says stores the marks for quiz number 1 for all the students the second column stores marks for quiz number 2 for all the students uh, similarly if we have quiz number 4 or midterm and final term so we can have more columns and if we have more students so we can add more rows so we can do that and similarly, we can write programs for addition of matrices, subtraction of matrices, and multiplication of matrices. We can do that as well. So say, for example, I will, in this in this particular session, since we cannot do a lot of things here, so what I'll do is, uh, I'll assume that uh, your class strength is 50. So we have 50 students, say, for example, in this course. And I want to store, uh, I will basically generate randomly uh, marks for each student for uh, uh, final term percentage marks. Okay, final term, make it marks and midterm, make it marks and 
assignments mein kitne marks hain and quizzes mein kitne marks hain i'll generate these values randomly for all 50 students and then i will calculate uh, the total marks for each student uh, depending upon the weightages for example 50% weightage have final key uh, 20% has say midterm key or 15% has say assignments key and 15% has say quizzes key say for example this is how we so we'll apply these weightages to these percentage marks and then print the total marks of each student okay so let's do that this would be a very uh, simple, uh, simple program uh, and let's do it okay Achha. so i'll i'll modify the program here that we have so i'll modify the init md array function and i'll modify print ko modify karne ki zarurat nahi hai i'll modify the init function and then i'll write other code here Achha, in it, mein kya karna hai? So we have to generate percentage marks. Percentage marks can be you uh, samaj le kahan se kahan tak ho sakte hain. Uh, zero se le ke 100 tak ho sakte hain. Theek hai? So those can be the percentage marks. So this would generate values between 0 and 99. Theek hai? So say for example, I we want values between say uh, sare jo students jo hain wo itne na like nahi hai ki wo zero bhi le le to hum range ko se kam as kam ek student se expected hai ki wo kisi bhi uh, mid term final term ya exam ya quiz mein at least 20% score karega so say for example we want the range to be from 20 to uh, to 100 theek hai so this would be then 81 ye jo uh, expression hai, this would generate values between 0 and 80 in ke saath 20 add karenge to ye 20 to 100 ki range ho jayegi theek hai so this would generate values percentage values between uh, 20 and 100 theek hai acha theek hai acha yahan pe hum kya kar rahe hain now we have 50 students so we have 50 students and for each student we have we need to generate marks for final term mid term assignments and quizzes okay so this is fine yeah i guess this is fine so we are going to call the init md array function and pass it pass it this array with the dimensions print we will print this message a percentage marks of students in say final term mid term uh, assignments and quizzes so we are just printing this message and that's it okay so let's see if it works fine so it would work fine there is nothing so complicated about it Achaji. so let's see the output so these are percentage marks for all the students all the 50 students in final term, mid term, assignments and quizzes. Okay? Achha. So now what we need to do is we need to calculate the total marks after applying these weightages. Okay? So we need to calculate that as well. Achha. So how can we do that? So let's do that. For example, we need to calculate the total marks let us do that in the main uh, function okay or we can write a separate function doesn't matter uh, you can do it either way so we can do it in the main function we can say for int i is equal to 0 okay i is equal to 0 i less than 50 Let's press I and I 
अच्छा तो फॉर ईच स्टूडेंट वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द टोटल मार्क्स ठीक है सो लेट मी डिक्लेयर अ वेरिएबल फॉर डूइंग दैट कैलकुलेशन सो लेट अस से डबल एंड लेट अस कॉल दैट वेरिएबल एज मार्क्स इफ यू वांट टू स्टोर दोस मार्क्स वी कैन डिक्लेयर एन अरे सो डबल मार्क्स एंड मार्क्स इज एन अरे ऑफ से 50 तो हर स्टूडेंट के टोटल मार्क्स हम स्टोर करना चाहते हैं स्टूडेंट के टोटल मार्क्स हम कैसे कैलकुलेट करेंगे मार्क्स आई तो टोटल मार्क्स ऑफ द आई एथ स्टूडेंट तो वो हमने कैसे कैलकुलेट करने हैं सो फाइनल टर्म के मार्क्स को हमने 50 परसेंट बेटिक देंगे ठीक है सो फाइनल टर्म के मार्क्स कहाँ पे स्टोर है वो जी अरे ए के आई एथ रो और जीरो कॉलम में स्टोर है ठीक है सो वी हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई दैट बाय 0.5, 50% उसका प्लस 20% परसेंट मिड टर्म का अरे आई के फर्स्ट कॉलम में मिड टर्म के मार्क्स स्टोर हैं सो हमने 20% उसका सेव कर अच्छा जी इसके बाद फिर बाकी रह जाते हैं क्विजेस और असाइनमेंट्स के सो क्विजेस के मार्क्स जो हैं आई ए थ्रो के सेकंड कॉलम में है से और उसका हमने 15 परसेंट लेना है तो उसको हमने 0.15 से मल्टीप्लाई कर देना और फिर असाइनमेंट्स के मार्क्स हैं आई ए थ्रो के थर्ड कॉलम में उसको भी हमने ज़ीरो पॉइंट वन फाइव से मल्टीप्लाई कर दें ठीक है सो दिस वे वी विल गेट ऑल द मार्क्स वी विल बी एबल टू कैलकुलेट द मार्क्स ऑफ ईच स्टूडेंट बेस्ड अपॉन द परसेंटेज मार्क्स ऑफ दैट स्टूडेंट द फाइनल मिड असाइनमेंट्स एंड क्विजेज एंड ईच ईच टाइप ऑफ मार्क्स लाइक द मार्क्स इन ईच ऑफ दीज डिफरेंट एक्टिविटीज they have different weightages so we apply those weightages and we calculate the marks theek okay? hai the final total marks is given but then we will determine the grade of the student acha ji and we can print those marks so we can print those marks we can say see out uh total marks of student with class number लेट एस सी के स्टूडेंट का जो क्लास नंबर है वो आई प्लस वन है ठीक है क्लास नंबर वन टू थ्री फोर इस तरह से तो वो मार्क्स क्या हैं लेट एस सी के वो मार्क्स हैं आई प्लस वन और यहाँ पे हम ये फुल कॉलम एंड देन वी प्रिंट द मार्क्स सो वो मार्क्स हैं मार्क्स आई ठीक है एंड देन वी प्रिंट द एंड लाइन कैरेक्टर एंड देन बी एट अच्छा जी ठीक है सो वी फर्स्ट कैलकुलेट द टोटल मार्क्स ऑफ ईच स्टूडेंट वी हैव फिफ्टी स्टूडेंट्स सो वी वी डू दिस फॉर ऑल द फिफ्टी स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी एक्सेस द मार्क्स फॉर द आई एथ स्टूडेंट द फाइनल टर्म मार्क्स फॉर द आई एथ स्टूडेंट द मिड टर्म मार्क्स the mark percentage marks in quizzes and percentage marks in assignments so we access those marks apply the weightages and we calculate the total marks now there can be other possibilities as well like we can store the weightages in a separate array and we can have all sorts of uh, other possibilities but we are not looking into that right now we are trying to keep things uh, simple theek okay? hai and then after we have calculated the marks for each student we print those marks on the screen theek okay? hai so let us do that let us compile this code and then build and run it okay so here we have say the marks for all the students the percentage mark for all the students in Uh, final term mid term assignments and quizzes and then below that we are basically sorry we are basically calculating the total marks say the total marks of 
student with class number one is 71.2 ठीक है so we applied those weightages you can do the calculation 86 का half would be 43 plus 48 का uh, 20 percent यानी one fifth so that would be around uh, nine point something so you add that to 43 and then 15 percent of this and 15 percent of this so the total would come out to be uh, 71.2 so this is how we calculate the total marks of the student okay so like you can use multi-dimensional arrays for different purposes so this is this was one uh, very small purpose okay? then you can also use multi-dimensional arrays for storing matrices and doing computations on matrices so matrices are basically uh, two-dimensional arrays so we have those in columns uh, so you can add them, you can do subtraction on them, you can do multiplication on them. Addition and subtraction, they are easy. Multiplication is slightly challenging. Okay? So you can think about how to multiply two matrices in C++, how, how to do that in C++. Okay? Uh, I guess we won't have time to write code for that. Uh, but this is something that can be done very easily. Okay? So I leave you at that. I, I would ask you, I would request, like you can think about it, how to do it. But uh, if you know how the process of uh, multiplication of matrices works, so it should be easy, not that difficult to code that, that process. So this is this is uh, all for now. Uh, in the next lecture, we are going to talk about pointers. Uh, that would be the last topic for this this course uh, so uh, i i hope like you you would have understood all these things that we discussed today and before today and i also hope that you would uh, think about the problems that i leave for you okay uh, i can do all these problems uh, that is not important what is important is that you should be able to do uh, whatever I'm asking you to do and if you try that then you are going to learn uh, all these things okay so until then uh, Allah Hafiz